Camping Families. Josh, the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV, hanging out in Goldwater, Michigan today, my home store, with the Smooth as Butter 331 BTS. Let me know if you're picking up what I'm putting down right there. This is a, a revision of the 33 RBTS model that came before it. Same general layout. What this is giving us is all private sleeping, private front bedroom, private rear, like, uh, well, tr first of all, true quad bunkhouse. Very is, uh, few RVs seem to actually give us four individual beds in the bunk room. This in the slide out of the bunk room has a, a flip down move bunk get out the way with a destination little, you know, eat and go dining desk when you get there. And that is, I think, one of the secrets in the sauce of this one because a lot of bunk houses can sleep a lot of people, but they don't have enough seating for all the butts that you're sleeping in that thing. This one can, albeit kind of sort of in two separate rooms, but when it's all opened up, it doesn't necessarily feel too awful split up and segregated. Uh, you know, if you need the extra space or on a rainy day, if you're just going, you know, stir crazy in this thing and the kids are going bonkers and everyone's going nuts, you can just be like, kids, go to your room. And they've got themselves their awesome little, you know, private rear hangout back there. And you can close the door and uh, maybe have a little Bailey's to that coffee. <laughs> um, the, uh, the living room is an opposing slide setup that gives us an island kitchen, which is hard to find in a bunkhouse travel trailer. And it provides some extra prep space. And this thing has, a, uh, I think, one of the better kitchens that you're going to find um, in a lot of bunkhouse models. Uh, the RV's got a lot of cool things. It's got a couple hangups too. Like it's got a massive awning, but part of it is potentially eaten up by the kitchen slide. And kind of showing you the good with the bad and everything in between, that's what we're gonna do here for you today to make sure this is the right one and to help you find your second camper the first time around. And if you like that, well, like the video. <laughs> Click the little button, subscribe if you're new with us, and let's get in there. Now, fellow video game enthusiasts may recognize the phrase a 360 no-scope, which is kind of, it's just like the uh, the ultimate braggadocious sort of uh, kill shot in a, uh, in a in a game. But what we're going to do today is 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 similar but different and not at all the same, actually. A 360 slow scope. Um, because I'm going to spin you around like a record baby so you can see all this thing, but I don't want to make you motion sick. Now, quick note, we're looking at the farmhouse decor today. Anything in the kitchen that's white, you can get brown in the cottage decor. So, you know, if that jelly ain't your jam, you got two ways around it. Some people prefer a uh, light roast coffee and some people prefer a dark roast coffee. I think it's just the best way I can kind of phrase that. Now, this thing looks and feels feels enormous in here, even though I'm not using tricky fisheye, you know, wide angle camera lenses. I mean, I've got all that nonsense available. That's just um, not not how I prefer to, to capture things. I want you to see them the way that you're going to see them in person. Um, now up top here, we have a little bit taller ceiling and central air, which uh, you definitely need on a big multi-slide private room sucker like this. I think, um, you know, this model also has the availability to have a second air conditioner installed in it up in the front bedroom. That's probably something, uh, given the size of this thing, I don't know that I wouldn't want. Today's version we're looking at actually does not have it. So you'll get to kind of, I guess, understand it both ways, you know? I like the USB plug there between the seating. I like the big breeze through windows. You might want to note, though, there are no slide side breeze windows uh, over there. You may note, however, it does have carpetless slide flooring, and I love it. I love it when the main floor and the slide uh, slide floor matchy match like that. It just, to me, it looks really good. Now, that sofa will change from that kind of gray color to more of a brown tone if you do get the cottage decor. And if you are stuck inside for a long time on a rainy day or you're going to spend an extended time in the RV, that's one of the areas that this floor plan really comes into play very, very nicely because uh, you're, you're basically right on top of the entertainment center if you want to add a TV to this thing. No TV is standard in this. Uh, they do have a TV option. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of split on it. You know, being some people are going to say well, family camping is more about getting out there and getting dirty and being by the picnic table. And some people are going to say, yeah, but I'm going to spend a really long time in this and on a rainy day if I'm stuck inside. Some entertainment wouldn't be bad. I, I kind of see it both ways. I do really like, though, that they put a window in the door of this one because, uh, again, being fair. You know, if we sit down and we look around, you're going to see that that is quite literally the only campsite window that you can see whatsoever from the living area. You know, um, in the uh, in the bunk room, in the bedroom, you've got a couple little windows, but uh, from over here, this is like, although, you know what? When I sit down like this, sometimes I see things a little differently than when I stand up. 
you've got some pretty good kitchen outlet coverage in this one. Uh, I love that outlet over there to the right of the stove uh, in the slide box. You're going to see there's a little coffee bar also that has some pretty good uh, outlet coverage in it there. Um, not to mention, I, I'm just, I'm a sucker for sometimes the stupidest things like a clutter cut and shoe garage. Give me a place to put the shoes by the door. Uh, and, and it's amazing how, how you just you end up tripping around uh, a lot less, especially when you're right by the door, tripping at the top of the stairs on the kid's shoes. Uh, not exactly the, uh, the best concept out there for you. Now, diving a little bit deeper here, look at the center armrest console of this one before and bam, after. And you see that this does include those uh, swivel side stands for that theater seat. It's uh, basically something that Jayco has some kind of patent or exclusivity or something like that on, which is why you don't see them from a lot of other brands. Notice the shelving in the cabinet above the entertainment center, though. That was something I didn't expect to find there, and I was not mad at it. Any extra storage you can get in this is fantastic. And I actually had an idea uh, over here in the kitchen that I'd like to run past you. That refrigerator, what we're looking at today is the 8 cubic foot a uh, 12 volt compressor fridge. There's also a gas electric two-way option. There's also that dead panel uh, above the refrigerator. I would kind of like it if the refrigerator was mounted up and even if it was just left an open pocket below the fridge, that could be like an awesome little dog dish space or something like that. Just an idea that I had, but I I'm open to, you know, suggestions. Like, what, what do you think? Is that a good idea? Is that a terrible idea? I don't know. Kind of reminds me of Animaniacs. We're like, good idea, bad idea. And uh, my favorite one of those was good idea was like playing the flute in a marching band. And uh, a bad idea was playing the pipe organ in a marching band. <laughs> my daughter, by the way, um, she's, uh, she's in uh, seventh grade and she just discovered the, uh, the, the Animaniacs song where Yakko names off all the different countries and watches it all the time. And I sit down just, just giggling like an idiot with her because it's just such good memories I have. I have talked about the Animaniacs for about 10 minutes straight. Holy cow, I'm so sorry. Anyway, back to the task at hand. Over there, that's that coffee bar I was talking about. Um, this could, you know, be a cool little appliance. Toasters, blenders, anything like that. Maybe you're going to make a little margarita station or something. I don't know. But the fact that there's some USB plugs over there could also make that a really handy little device charge station. And what's kind of cool, we have hard door separation to all the sleeping spaces. And this is a fantastic bunk room. Uh, and again, one of the key things here is that this can uh, have four separate individual sleeping areas, but I wanna point out that you have the same carpetless floor flush slide back here that you have in the living room. Well, not the exact same, because obviously it's a dinette only, but you get the idea. And this is kind of what I was saying. You know, you can sleep a bunch of people in this RV, but there's not enough seating for everybody in the living room. Uh, potentially, that's where this room kind of comes in handy. Now, Jayco includes this thing. Their technical marketing term for it is called the Dangler, but it tells us our bunk ratings. So you've got four 300-pound rated bunks in this, including this one right here, the move bunk, get out the way system that you see. Even with my left-handed chicken arm, I can still uh, just flip that sucker out of the way. And this is what I call an eat and go dinette. I don't know why I call it that. I think some of the old dogs that cut my teeth in this business used to make that statement. And maybe it's a phrase that used to be used in the RV industry, like in the Fleetwood days. I don't know. I just know that that's what it was always called when I was growing up in the business. And that's kind of what I call it now. Now, if you choose to, you can throw some entertainment back here for the kids so they can watch their SpongeBob SquarePants. And uh, again, if they're watching the Animaniacs song, or frankly, or SpongeBob, I'm going to be back here with them. Now, again, the 360 slow scope, turn you over to the left. There are six lights in this bunk room alone um, and, and outlets next to every sleeping position. Each bed has its own light, plus there's two more up in the ceiling which uh, I don't know, personally, I, I think is very, very cool that you can really lighten and brighten it up uh, back in here very, very nicely. Now, uh, looking at the bunk room in a little more detail, just like we did the living room, I actually want to start right down here because just like you saw in the living room, but bam we have storage below the dinette down there. And again, you see that that all folds down to create four separate sleeping zones, which is very cool. I really like, you know, uh, bunkhouses very often lack uh, any level of good storage. And anytime a manufacturer can put any level of storage in a bunk room, 
I really commend them for it. One other thing to mention is uh, the the lower dinette in the slide and the 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 top bed on the campsite of the RV. Those are a little bit wider. The, the dinette um, sleeper is a little bit um, shorter in total length. So your bigger kid will probably want to sleep on this bed back here. And now that I'm looking at this, that wall, you either, it, it would be nice if there was a window there or otherwise, the kids are going to start putting an Ace Ventura poster up on that thing. And I don't know if anybody wants to see that. I also, my daughter's like a YouTube kid, you know, she just doesn't like to sit down and watch entire movies, ironically. Um, she doesn't like watching her dad on YouTube either. <laughs> I think she probably watches YouTube to be able to escape her dad a little bit, which, you know what, if I was a kid, I wouldn't want to watch my dad all day. And she doesn't care about camping as much as she just cares about, you know, Animaniacs and entertainment. Um, but I need, she needs to see the Ace Ventura movies, I think. We watched Dumb and Dumber, and boy, she loved that. I, I, I tell you, Dumb and Dumber is one of those movies like Airplane with Leslie Nielsen. It is just so iconic. Why am I... You know what? I'm just all over the random pop trivia stuff, and I'm like really not focused on the task at hand today. Sorry. It's sort of like the other day I showed up late for a meeting. I'm like, hey, sorry I'm late. I, uh, I, I didn't want to be here. <laughs> Um, so you saw the room around the toilet. Here's some room in the shower. Good headroom. Elbow room? Mm, mm, it's okay. This is the one thing I keep, you know what, there's there's a bunch of little things that, you know, okay, we could do, you know, a little better, a little different in this RV. But this is the, if I was going to make one change in this RV, I would want a full medicine cabinet right there, not just a mirror. That's just for whatever reason, that is just... Um, I'm like a stick in the mud. I, I'm, I'm just absolutely stuck on that feature. But my opinion of stuff doesn't actually matter to a manufacturer. What matters is your opinion and more specifically what you will buy and what you will not buy. So um, as, as I've gone through this video, uh, you know, do me a favor, leave some comments uh, and kind of let me know, like, what do you think? Like, what do you like? And like, well, if there was one thing you would change in this RV, what would it be? And is it a deal maker, deal breaker factor? Like, by the way, this is a 50 amp service. The second air conditioner would just get installed up there. It doesn't actually have a ceiling vent. One's going to need to be cut for that. Or you can actually get it with the second air installed right from the factory, just to give you an idea. Now the right hand uh, closet over there, that is actually just dresser storage. It doesn't actually have any kind of hanging space. And I really like the wide open side stands on both sides there, uh, where that could be handy. Notice, because the RV is a little bit taller, they were able to put a really nice amount of height between the mattress and those side stands. So if you did want to go with a little bit wider mattress, you could get away with it. But this is a Camp Queen bed. If I'm eyeballing it correctly, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll leave you a note on the screen. Um, that looks roughly like a camp queen to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm, see the problem is I, that I'm staring at that pattern too long and now it feels like the size is changing. Hopefully I remember to leave some actual specs on the screen for you. If you get the optional solar package, that's where the charge controller would be located up on the roof. There is a roof solar prep plug and there is wiring that comes down to here, but that's really all solar prep is. Um, if you get one like this and you want to add some solar, you need to put in the controller and finish running the wiring down to the battery. That's the difference between solar prep and solar ready. And Heartland has actually started doing some solar ready, which is interesting. Getting that little mirror mirror uh, out of the way right there and getting you a look at the Foot Locker storage under the bed. I really do commend them though. Um, I've been pretty critical of this RV. There's things I like, and there's been a couple things that I've kind of pointed out. I really commend them for putting the full struts uh, below the bed there, because that's just not something that, you know, every brand seems to want to do. Now, where this is going to get very interesting very quickly, and notice that it got very dark in here because I've uh, killed all the lights on this thing, is... What kind of road mode or lack of uh, road mode accessibility you get. And I probably should have started doing this pivot and spin like a ballerina a little bit sooner. Because I had to do a lot of filler content just to get us right here so you could see the before and after. <laughs> because the thing is here, this RV does a lot of things. And it does a lot of things well. But road stop 
travel stop access to, well, <laughs> anything, really? Uh, not exactly on its list of things it's going to do very, very well. When the slides close up on this one, she done, son. About the only thing you can access uh, is the shoe garage and the uh, control panel to, you know, open the slides to give you some more access to things. But that's the thing. Every RV has different strengths, different weaknesses, different benefits, and different drawbacks. My goal is to just help you understand those to help you find your second camper the first time around. Now for towing recommendations, uh, I do believe you want to step up beyond a, a half ton pickup for something like this. Um, you know, if you look at the weight capacity, somebody might look at it and say, well, my half ton's rated for 11, 12, 13,000 pounds, and the GVW, that's less than 10. And yes, that is correct. But when I start looking at the hitch weight and the length of this thing, that starts to feel like it's going to muscle around uh, a lot of half ton pickups out there. Though, um, anytime anyone has any sort of, you know, uh, you know, real world towing experience with this. I would love it if you chimed in and kind of, you know, shared those insights with basically the rest of the class. <laughs> now for towing safety, you not only have those Goodyear Endurance radials, but we've also got turn signal safety lighting here. And um, this is one of the only things I've ever seen in this class and frankly, a, a, a very limited number of RVs period that are prepped and ready for not just rear view, but also side view observation camera suites, which is kind of cool. Notice too that we have a full true pass through on both sides of the RV with magnet holdbacks and a key like system. So unlike the, you know, the olden days of campers when I needed so many keys on the rings of my key ring that I looked like a medieval jailer. You know, like when you watch those movies and the guy with the ax and the hood on his head always has like 400 keys hanging off of his belt. Well, you ain't gonna have to look like that person. First of all, why were you walking around the campsite with an ax? Which is, by the way, a good way to both be left alone by the neighbors and attract uh, attention from the local authorities. It's kind of a two for one if you really think about it. Um, sorry, I'm stupid. What I'm getting at here is just simpler and easier. Um, You've got a two plus three year warranty here, just like all your Jayco stuff. And uh, that's one of those things basically nobody out there is going to match the warranty that you're getting on one of these. Now, I really like how the entry door is dead in the middle of a very good size power awning. I think some folks are not going to like how it's located over the kitchen slide and I have enough room today Thank you, by the way, to our lot management team here at my Coldwater store. In the comments section, say, uh, actually, my uh, the, the call sign that I gave to my tractor driver here is Scarecrow. Leave him a note to say, thanks, Scarecrow. Now, that being said, I don't know if he knows that I gave him call sign Scarecrow, but that's kind of the thing with call signs on radios. Um, you don't pick them, they kind of pick you. Uh, actually, years past, I, uh, I worked for Yellow Transportation, Yellow Freight, and uh, my call sign was Moses. I didn't uh, ask why, because I could have done worse. I just said, that's not bad, I'll take it. So, anyway, what you care about, what kind of patio space is available? Tell me, do you think this is enough? You know, do you think the awning eats into it too awful much? Or do you think it's all right? I, personally, I could live with it. I can live with it because this model is giving us that awesome interior space. I can live with this right here. Ooh, hey, I don't, dang it. I, uh, I hate being the bearer of bad news, but I, I like to be fair. And these are things if you've never camped before, this is something to think about. You have a water heater exhaust over here on the campsite of the RV. You have a very hot potentially surface. Like if the, uh, if the, the kids touch that metal exhaust port, it's gonna sting. It's gonna sting a lot, and it's gonna be some alligator tears for a little bit there. But you'll, uh, you know, they'll they'll get through it. But it just, just, I don't know, a little thing to consider. Now, one other thing to mention on the awning, because obviously I'm being fair. I'm showing you good with the bad. That slide out does eat a chunk of the awning lighting because it does run right at the base of the awning. But moving on from there, this thing has an awesome camp kitchen, and I think we actually can call it a camp kitchen because have you noticed? how rare a true big outside camp kitchen has become in the RV industry. Ones that have the bigger fridge, a real sink with a drain, some actual storage space, a little bit of countertop prep area. This has become uh, about as rare as hen's teeth, as my old farmer family members would have said. Um, now the awning doesn't cover it, but that uh, you know door flips up to about uh, six and a half foot-ish tall. I'm eyeballing it right there. 
you're gonna have to be awful tall to bonk your noggin on that thing and outside camp kitchen models do include the handy little griddle cooking station which actually just mounts right on the rear bumper here and when you're not using it that front pass-through storage compartment makes for a perfect little storage place now not only do we have a, uh, a full sink give you a look at the awning from the other direction while we're over here by the way not only do we have a full sink in the uh, camp kitchen you may notice we also have a, uh, a full outside hot cold utility shower which is kind of cool now I mentioned how this has um, you know safety lighting for traveling that's called J smart lighting and um, you know when you flip on your turn signals all the lights on the side of the RV blink but additionally, this does also have reverse travel lighting, which is uh, very cool. So if you are backing into a campsite, you got a rear view camera, or if you got a spotter back here, uh, you know, that, uh, that, that can just help everybody see what's going on. Notice how the windows are tinted too. That's another nice little feature that a first time RVer may not even be aware of the difference. And these stabilizer jacks, if you get motion sensitive in an RV, uh, you might want to keep an eye out for RVs that use these kind of stabilizers because they include an extra arm that drops down uh, that really kind of, uh, not really kind of, it just really does take a huge amount of the wiggle and the jiggle out of the RV, especially as those kids are romping and rolling through this thing. It can really make the difference between you needing to take some Dramamine and you just feeling fine. So let me know what you think of the updates here, the changes they've made. One of the major things that uh, you can't obviously discern is that they have dropped the price point of this floor plan significantly from what it was last season, which I think is awesome keeping some things more accessible. Now, if you're kind of curious to what that actually boils down to, check the links in our video description. Um, we have these shipped all over the nation and shipping alone can be plus or minus five thousand dollars off the price tag of this thing so we keep every single unit we have in stock with pricing posted right on our website whether you're curious or whether you're serious it's just one click away so until then take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone mm -hmm.